We just spent $17 million on a 15 year old whose attributes we can't see. What could possibly go wrong? Find out on July 1st. Wait, he can't move until he's 16, so he joins in January. Oh, I hate it. Oh my God! He's like a starter already. He's so good. He's the best player in the world. This is the best wonder kid I have ever seen on Football Manager. And I didn't find them because of all this fancy scouting videos that I've made. I'm gonna teach you how to find them in this video. But in order for this to work, it's very complicated magic. You actually have to click on the subscribe button or else you'll actually be cursed. You'll instead get FM'd in, you know, instead of finding these amazing wonder kids. It's just, it's just the way that it works. I don't make the rules. It all starts with a very simple concept. And this is a concept that comes from curiosity and my desire to find wonderful abstract wonder kids. And it's normally something that happens for you in the summer. So it's something that you need to pay attention to when you enter into your off season. And I actually went through it on the same stream. Now, what we're doing here is we're looking through major international competitions, both senior and junior. Obviously at the junior level, what you are looking for are the players that stick out because of their age. These are arbitrary lines that I tend to draw, but they're lines like any U21 competition, I'm looking for everybody that's 18 or younger because they are playing up. Any U20 competition, we're looking for guys 18 or younger too, because it's an arbitrary line. You can draw that line wherever you want. For a team like France, maybe you draw it at 19 in a U20 competition because it's France, they're gonna be good. But for a team like Solomon Islands, maybe you just go for the, the one 16 year old that's there because you're assuming that most of the team is just not gonna be that good. The point is that these events, these big moments in international ball collect the best players. And when coaches are leading their national teams, whether it's senior or junior, you have a plethora. That's not the, hmm. It is the right word. You have a plethora of scouting information available to you, and they're able to use it in a way that you could really never gather, especially considering that the scouting system seems to be a little more opaque and a little harder to use than it was before. But if there's a great 16 year old in Indonesia, your scouts might not find them, but they will always be on the Indonesian national team, which is how we found this guy. He's pretty nice, ain't he? But he's also not Sebastian Beaver. The factor to remember here is your scouts are actually gonna have to go through and scout all of these things. Now I have 19 of some of the very best scouts in the world, so we're gonna get through that pretty fast. But if you are Joe Schmo in the North Irish second division, well, you probably got two scouts and they're not very good. So you can't do what you're watching here. You need to maybe click on those players and only scout the ones whose attributes you can see with the naked eye look good. Now this is curiosity motivation right here. Th this is going to take you some time, but it's also gonna help you identify maybe a couple of players in the Asian Cup that are young on those teams that you actually might wanna make a move for. That's right, Asian Cup, Gold Cup, I do this for everything. In fact, on that stream, I did it for at least three different competitions. I can't even remember. We had the U20 World Cup, the U21 Euros, and the Gold Cup, and we went through and identified players at an age that struck us as abnormal. And when you do this, you do have to sift through a lot of trash. I mean, just look at all the bad players that I found while I was doing it this time. But then you find Sebastian Beaver and it's okay. Germany's got a 15 year old, so. Okay, 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 be relax, be relax, be relax, relax, okay? Give me 17 and a half right there. And uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> He's that good. We're going in blind. It does not matter. Yes! 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 Ow! Still excited! Oh, funny bone. It's important in order to save your scouts when you wade into this trash though, that's not Sebastian Beaver, that you don't want to scout them again. It's why we're doing one week scouting and that you click this little button down in the bottom left corner that you see every single time. And that keeps your scouts from updating you on any business that player might be involved in in the future. Like if they get put on the loan list, you do not want to be notified for all 300 guys you happen to look at over four different tournaments. You might've noticed a lot of this stuff happened on stream. If you want to hang out with me there, get this stuff live, have a great time and generally be invigorated, there's a link to the Twitch down in the description. Check it out. And while you're there, you see me wearing a lot of cool jerseys, and that's because we are sponsored today and every day by Mystery Football. It is the right way. Okay. Now, Mystery Football is a an officially sourced mystery jersey company. There's a discount if you want to order your own with a link down in the description, and once a month, they send us one of these lovely cardboard boxes with a new mystery shirt in it 
for us to try. Before you hear all those wonderful tips about keeping your wonder kids, it's time for me to open this. I accidentally just peeked. We're supposed to do this together. Ready? Three, two, one. I can't see. Who is it? Real Deportivo. Dude, it's Deportivo La Coruña, the fallen giant itself. And it's, I have not seen this kit. This is actually really cool. <laughs> Look at that. I didn't even know they went with these colors. That is so nice. It's sponsored by a non-alcoholic beer. And after my heart, okay. Time to go put it on. You have to subscribe to the OnlyFans to be able to watch that. Links in the Discord, be sure to join it. Also, if you weren't sure, I'm obviously kidding. Mom, I am kidding, I promise. Look at that. That is good. Okay. Remember, mystery football down in the description. And if you happen to not know who it is, you get one of these fancy little cards that'll tell you. Deportivo La Coruña, España. Vamos. Now, I don't want to give myself too much credit, but on the stream, I actually explained what we're about to talk about incredibly well. So I'll let me from earlier today take over. But before that, let me set the scene for you. So what's happening here? We dim the lights, we play a little samba music. And then we just start vibing with it. And then all of a sudden, you get an offer from Manchester United. But you thought ahead. You thought ahead and you protected your player. And now you can use it. Zealand, how can we samba in these low lights and use it? Like this is this is a huge tip. So you ready? The prompts that you get. Like if I raise the price to 70 million and then they reject it, Jakob will be like, why did you price me out of a move to Manchester United? But if I just reject it, then he's gonna be like, why didn't you let me go? Those prompts are easier to get through than the you price me out of a move. It is easier to get to a no promise resolution that doesn't super anger them from the second prompt where you just reject it straight up, okay? So we reject it, we get an inbox method, uh, like message. And then first we're gonna obviously ask Vanderhorst to talk him out of it which didn't work, and that's not a surprise. Um, we also have Sander Henneman, who's the captain, and he has the opportunity to talk him out of it as well. Two, uh, our two best leaders taking a pop at it, neither can resolve. That's not surprising because he was incredibly interested. So he said, I'd appreciate being allowed to talk to United. I think you need to play with better teammates at this stage. You don't want to say this. You absolutely don't want to say this. I couldn't accept that offer as it wasn't close to our evaluation of you. That is going to bring up the prompt of like negotiations and what price is okay? You don't want to do any of these promises because what we want to do is we don't want to make a promise. Now, you do have the opportunity to maybe find a convince that will keep them here. Like, I don't think you're going to get as much soccer as you need at United. Uh, like, the decision's been made. There's no point in discussing it. That usually doesn't work, right? We'll come back if they make another offer for you. They probably will, so that's not effective. I can't let you go. You're very influential in the locker room. It's not really effective. The locker room atmosphere is really good. Why would you want to leave that behind? That can work, and so can the social group. Like, if he's in the core social group, which he might be. Uh, yeah, he is. He's actually pretty influential, too. He is in the influential players. He's one of our only six influential players in the locker room. I am going to try and convince the locker room atmosphere, though, because you saw our locker room atmosphere is outstanding. What is his personality? Fairly professional and level-headed, so he could feel that. So, uh, we went with our convince. It didn't work. You don't want to back down when we don't want to make a promise. So the team comes, I, this could make him, this could make him mad, right? If we go after the team has, uh, come first, I won't have, uh, one player causing problems. You're not going anywhere. So I'm going to offer him a pay raise to stay. This usually doesn't work, but it also gets us out of this conversation without making a promise. Cool. So he's under contract for three years, and now he's just mad we didn't let him go to Manchester United. But he has a three-year contract, which he will absolutely turn around, and he's not super mad, so he'll turn around faster. It is absolutely imperative to offer contracts and extend as far as possible on every wonder kid that you have on your team. Anybody that you think might be unsettled by an offer from a bigger club, you wanna have them on a long, the longest contract you can possibly get. The only reasons you shouldn't do that are one, they're not interested in renewing, or two, they are asking for a release clause that is below what you believe you'd be able to get if you sold them that summer. Because the bitter pill to swallow here is that you might as well sell them for more money than that because you're not going to be able to get it without the release clause. Now, what determines whether you have those release clauses or not? Because in FM22, that's more pertinent than ever. Those release clauses rely on two things. One, the player, and two, your club. Now, the most important thing from your club is reputation. You can see that by going to club info and looking right here. Now, we just 
just went from three and a half to four stars. So basically all of the release clauses people were asking for aren't there anymore. The only one that we have on our team right now is Mark Aaron Wolf, our goalkeeper, and it's $73 million, which is an amount of money I can live with for our goalkeeper, even though he plays for Germany. Now, anything three and a half stars and below, if you're signing the best wonder kids in the world, they're still going to be asking for release clauses to $20, $25 million range if they're more ambitious and might want to leave. There is actually a cheeky way around this, and it's something that we're doing with our goalkeeper right now because we already lost one of our goalkeepers to a stupidly low release clause, and we don't want it to happen again. We've set the asking price a few million dollars below the release clause. Now, nobody's interested now anyways, but this will generally bait offers in below the release clause. Now, most of the time, teams will go over the top anyways, but it doesn't hurt to ask them to pay a little less and then reject it anyways, and then they're confused. It's like you're in Pokemon and you use confusion. Might delay it long enough that you can actually get a contract in there or something. But if players are asking for release clauses, I highly recommend looking to offer a contract and just checking if that release clause demand goes up or if it disappears entirely. Maybe once every couple weeks, you put a timer on your calendar to look at it. But as long as you keep them under long contracts and then you know, make sure you don't make any promises, then eventually they will get over it. As you can see from the last serious transfer window, when all of our mad guys got over it. Now, there's no exact way to predict when they're going to get over it, but my rule of thumb is that if you have a contract longer than two years from that particular point, you can always wait it out. If it's inside of that, you are gambling. But Football Manager is a game of chance at the end of the day, so gamble away, but responsibly, so you don't lose your great players for free or have to literally give them the managerial job while they're 20. How old are you? Now, if you enjoyed the video, maybe found it a little bit helpful, then slap a like down below. And if you want to keep the binge going, I fully support it. Here's a video about how to develop your Wonder Kids that we spent a lot of time researching to make sure that we got right. So do check that out so that once you get these guys locked in for the long haul, you can make them better.